Hi everyone and welcome back to Demetra's Dishes. So I'm going to be sharing with you today a beautiful fall recipe that is another perfect dish to serve on Thanksgiving. I'm going to be showing you how to make my version of an apple strudel. We're going to be using phyllo dough which is really easy because it's sold in the supermarket, it's store bought, you don't have to roll out your own hard to make uh, strudel dough which is really tedious sometimes. We're going to go over the ingredients and then we're going to get started. So like I said we're going to be using phyllo dough for this. It's found in the freezer section of most supermarkets. If you can't find it in your supermarket, look in maybe a specialty food store that has Mediterranean foods or I'll leave a link in the descrip description box where you can get it online. We're going to need some salt because all dessert desserts have a little pinch of salt to bring out all the sweetness and put the flavors together. Some cranberries which are completely optional. You can leave them out or you can use them or you could substitute raisins or dried cherries. Some sugar brown sugar, cornstarch, pecans, or you can use walnuts, some ground cinnamon, we're going to use the zest of an orange. We're also going to use, um, these are core, uh, peeled and cored apples that I have soaking in lemon water right here, and I use Gala apples and Granny Smith. You can use your favorite combination of apples. I have some butter melting in the pan that we're going to saute our apples in. And then I have a little more melted butter and sugar to brush and layer our phyllo dough with, which we're going to talk about later. Now, I'm going to clean up around here so we can slice our apples and get them in the pan. This is a, a sort of like a half-cooked pie filling that we're going to make ourselves. And that's just going to make it a, give it a little bit of that like caramelized flavor. And it's going to cook a little faster in the oven. And it's just going to be really delicious. So drain your apples and kind of pat them dry with a paper towel. So that way they're not too wet when they go in the pan. They're going to release their own juices and they don't need to have extra added water to them. We're just going to slice them. Not too thin and not too thick. And maybe each quarter of apple you could slice into three or four slices depending on the size. So you're looking for apples about this much in thickness. You can take a look. Some of them are going to be a little bit thicker than others and thinner. That's going to be totally fine. That's what you're looking for. Let's put this on the side. I'm going to put these all in my pan. And basically what we're going to do is, doesn't that sound nice? What we're going to do is we're just going to cook them until they release their juices and thicken up. And we're going to do that by adding all of our brown sugar, our white sugar, our cornstarch. The cornstarch is, what, is what's going to thicken all of this. And then I'm going to add a little pinch of salt, just a tiny bit. And we're going to cook this a little, just a couple of minutes until everything comes together, the apples release a little bit of their juices, and the sauce begins to thicken. And I'll show you what that looks like once it's there. The only thing that's missing is the cinnamon. I like a little more cinnamon. If you want to, if you really like it, you can add some ground, freshly ground nutmeg to this. But I'm just going to leave it with the cinnamon. I'm a huge fan of cinnamon. It's my favorite. It's my favorite flavor around this time of year, so I like to use it pretty heavy-handedly. So cook these over a medium-high heat. You don't want to cook them over low heat because then they'll, re um, they'll release way too much water and then they'll cook down too fast and they'll mash when, when they're cooking in the oven. So just a little bit and just until everything comes together and thickens. And that's perfect. This is what you want to see. You want it to be nice and bubbly and you want the sauce to have thickened. It's going to thicken a little bit more and it'll, it'll, the apples will, um, will become even more juicy when they cook in the oven. So now what you want to do is you want to add your dry fruit and your, and your pecans. I'm using pecans, but you can use walnuts and you can totally leave it out too if you're not a fan of it. And then we're just going to put, because it's, it's this time of year, I love orange. I put orange zest in everything. You can put a little bit of orange zest or some lemon zest if you like. Just a little bit. Maybe like a quarter of an orange zest. Would be perfect. Give it a nice stir and now you just want to set this aside and have it cool completely before you add it to um, the prepared phyllo dough which is what we're going to do next. So now when you're working with phyllo dough what you want to do is take it out of the freezer the night before 
and store it in your refrigerator so that way it can defrost really nicely. Otherwise, if you're going to use frozen phyllo dough, it'll be stuck together. You won't be able to take it apart and then you'll have a big mess on your hands. So you let it defrost in the refrigerator overnight and then about an hour or two before you're ready to use it, take it out and leave it at room temperature and you'll be really good to go. It'll be really easy. We're going to be using around 12 sheets of this phyllo. So let's open it all up. Now, I like to work directly in my sheet pan. It just makes it easier. It's less of a mess to clean up. Everything is done in one tray and that's just easy. And we're going to take one sheet at a time. And we're just going to sprinkle some butter over it. And about a teaspoon of sugar between each layer. And we're going to do that same step for tw 12 times on each layer. And now when you get to the last sheet, you don't have to butter it or put any sugar onto it. I'm just going to set this aside for a moment. And then when you're, you're going to have a little bit of phyllo dough left, you want to make sure you don't leave it out to completely finish this process because then it'll go to waste. You just want to roll it back up in the plastic that it's in because this doesn't have any fat on it and it dries up really quickly and it starts to crumble and just fall apart. And that'd be too bad to waste this because you can use so many other recipes. I'm just going to take this, wrap it up in some plastic wrap and just put it back in my freezer or my refrigerator just a little bit, just like that. Now my apple pie mixture looks like it's cooled pretty well. It doesn't have to be completely cooled. You now you want to put it in your phyllo the long way. Just fold up the edges just a little bit like that to kind of create a seal. Put some more butter on them. And then we're just going to roll it up. And you can use the parchment paper that's underneath to help you. Tuck it in. and put the seam, make sure the seam is down, just like that. There's just a little bit of butter remaining in my little pot. I'm just going to pour it on top and all around. This is going to help it bake and be just beautiful and golden. Just like that, my oven is preheated to 375 degrees. I'm going to put it in there and it's going to cook for about 35 minutes or so. It's going to be beautiful and golden all around and crisp and delicious. And I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, so our apple strudel came out of the oven. It took about 35 minutes for it to cook. You're really looking for color and crispiness. So you want it to be really nice and golden on top and, and be really crispy. And it's really important that you allow it to cool at least 15-20 minutes before you serve it so that way it doesn't, everything doesn't ooze out and kind of fall apart. And also it's easier to trans, um, transport onto a serving platter when it's cooled down. So if you cook it on parchment paper, it detaches pretty easily. You might need two spatulas though. Mine, phyllo dough, um, had a little bit of a crack down the middle and that's totally fine, no big deal. The more rustic, the better. The more rustic, the more better, right? <laughs> so we're going to put this in here on our serving platter. You definitely don't want it looking like it came out of some factory. Take your serving plate. Now, the only added um, embellishment I want to put on this is some powdered sugar and cinnamon. Beautiful. You can't ever have enough cinnamon this time of year. It's 
smells amazing. We're gonna cut into this. So it is best to cut into this with a serrated knife because phyllo crumbles and it's really crispy. So you wanna have a beautiful slice. That's definitely what you wanna hear. Can you hear the crispiness? Look at that. I wish you could smell it. it. Smells amazing. It smells like Thanksgiving. It's very comforting. This is the perfect dish to make on Thanksgiving. If you want to skip the traditional apple pie and you want to go for something more, I don't know, more unique, I guess, definitely make this. I'm going to take a little bite because I cannot resist. Where's my fork? Divine. The apples are perfectly cooked. They're not mushy. The phyllo is nice and crisp. You can definitely taste the cinnamon. The cranberries here add a really nice tang. And I like the crunch that the pecans add. Get the recipe. www.demetriusdishes.com. I love to read your comments, so leave me lots of comments down below. Ask me any question you want to ask, especially if it pertains to like getting ready for Thanksgiving, if you need any tips. If you want to learn how to make anything else, just post down below. I read them all and I try to answer them all. Thumbs up the video, share the goodness with your friends and let everybody know about my channel. And I will see you guys next time. Bye everyone.